Okay, so welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about how you can do energy measurements on your oscilloscope. And we're going to be looking specifically at a Rigol. And I've got a 1054Z, wonderful scope. And um, we're going to see how you can use the internal math functions to calculate energy through a device. Now, why would you need to do that? Why would you need to calculate energy? Well, as an example, in one of our recent videos, we we're talking about transformers and nonlinear characteristics of transformers where you can get a big pulse of inrush current when you energize it. And we were talking about, you know, maybe that pulse of inrush current is sufficient energy to melt a fuse that's protecting the transformer. So in order to figure out the answer to that, what size fuse do you need to apply in order to not be fooled by this um, uh, inrush current? So you're going to need to figure out the energy in your, in your inrush pulse and see if it's getting up to near the rating of the fuse. And often uh, with the quality fuses, the manufacturer will give you an indication of how much energy or I squared T is required to uh, melt the fuse. So we're going to figure out how you can you can calculate I squared T from a uh, current through a device. So for example, you might have a pulse like this, a pulse of current, and this one is uh, 100 milliseconds pulse. And we're going to see if that is sufficient or getting near the rating of the fuse so that that might give you enough energy to melt the fuse. And here in this blue is what we're going to be calculating. It's basically going to be um, calculating for this pulse the increasing amount of energy that is going through that fuse just for this pulse. And it's going to build up and build up. And it's going to, when the pulse stops, you're going to have a fixed amount of uh, energy. So let's step back and basically get a feel for what we're doing here. Um, for example, let's say I've got a resistor, a 0.5 ohm resistor, and I've got one amp flowing through it, one amp constant DC current. The power that is being dissipated in that resistor, or the rate of energy dissipation, that's what power is, is equal to the current squared times that resistance value, I squared R. In this case, we've got one squared, or one times one, times 0.5 ohms, which means we have 0.5 watts of energy dissipated every second in this resistor. Okay, watts is joules per second. So it's indication of how much energy is dissipated per second. Now energy, the total energy dissipated over a period of time is that I squared R value times the amount of time that that power is flowing through that device. All right. So as we talked about in our previous video on understanding electricity usage, it's no different from the meter on your house where it's measuring watts times hours or kilowatts times hours. It's a, an indication of watts or power times the amount of time that that power is flowing. So you add it all, you add up, uh, you know, if this 0.5 watts is flowing for 10 hours, it's 0.5 times 10 or 5 watt hours. So now what if I don't know what this R value is? Okay, or what if I don't care what the R value is? Um, vendors, for example, we we're talking about fuses, a fuse vendor will not include the R in the calculation because it's somewhat irrelevant, right? They know what the R value is. But what they will tell you is instead of an I squared times R times time, they'll ignore the R and just figure out what the I squared times time is for their particular fuse, okay? So yeah, the R is part of it, but the vendor can treat it as kind of irrelevant because you don't need to know what the R is. They just need to tell you an I squared times time, and it's about the, the same thing. The only difference is this 0.5 or whatever. So the fuse vendor will generally give you an I squared T value, not an I squared times T times R value. And they will say, okay, if the, the pulse of energy, like we saw here, if this pulse of energy gets up 
to or above this I squared T value, then the fuse will blow. So what you need to do is you need to figure out for whatever pulse your um, fuse will see. In our case, it's a pulse of inrush current from a nonlinear transformer. Uh, you need to figure out if the I squared T for that pulse is at or above the value that the manufacturer recommends. And uh, again, if you get a good quality fuse, they will give you an I squared T value um, for their fuse. So if we're going to do it on a um, Rigol scope, here's the basic um, flow of how it's going to be done. It's really very simple to do, but there's a couple things you need to be aware of. Um, Rigol, they talk about an inner layer calculation and an outer layer calculation. And we said before, um, there's two parts to this. There's an I squared, and then you have to add that up over time, like you do with your meter. You take the power times time. So the first thing is you figure out the current squared. They call that an inner layer calculation, and the result is an FX calculation. Don't ask me why, but you just need to know that. So what we can do is we can calculate the current squared and feed the result of that into what's called an outer layer calculation or an integral of that. So you're basically doing two parts. You're squaring this pulse and then you're summing it over time and getting this um, blue, way, blue trace right here, the math result. The way you do it is, we'll show you on the Rigol how to do it, but it's basically two steps. Um, you go into the math, there's a math button and then you go into options and you set the FX operator, you select A times B. That's basically multiplying uh, the current times itself. In order to do that, you can do math on the same channel. So you can multiply channel one times channel one to get channel one squared. You press A value for this A times B and what's the B value for the A times B and both are gonna be the same channel, okay? And that's gonna square the um, channel one pulse. So once we got that, we got the square, then we send that into the outer layer. To do that, we go to the math operator and select integral or integrate. Press the operation to select on and press source to select FX. So now we're telling this integral to take this FX um, as the input and that will give us this output, all right? It will give us this output. Okay, so here's the basic steps on a Rigol 1054Z. Uh, you can see I've got my um, pulse coming into channel two so that we can make sure we don't just default to channel one, make sure we got our settings right. So I got channel two, and um, first thing you go into the math button, press this math button, and the math um, options will come up. Select this first one that says math, and what we have to do is we have to scroll using this down arrow and we have to go to options and we have to scroll again and here we've got the FX operator and we have we have it set at A times B and that will do the I squared value as long as we have X, FXA and FXB selected to the proper channel. I've got channel 2 here so it's going to do an A times B for the same channel. So then we're all set with that, now we have to do the uh, configuration of the integral. So we go back to math, and you can see I've got the operator as I've selected integral. And there's a whole bunch of choices, but I'm going to select integral and set it on. And the source has to be fx. So you go down to the source and you select fx. Keep in mind that with these math um, uh, traces, they give it to you in, in generic units. So in my case, here, this blue is this integral of this um, pulse, and it's giving it to me in a scale of 200 milli units per division. So it's kind of a generic units. Um, we need to know what the U means, but it's basically 0.2 units per division. So I'm 0 0.246, uh, almost 0.7 units so that's basically the energy calculation. I hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.